In this video, we're going to take a look at Hogwarts Legacy and its graphic settings and see if we can make the most optimized settings. And it starts now. Okay, so Hogwarts Legacy has been out for almost two weeks now, and I gotta say, so far, it has lived up to the hype. But like most recent released games, it has its own flaws and problems, one of which is the performance issue most users are experiencing like frame drops and low FPS. Many users like myself are trying to make the best settings that can give us the highest FPS without sacrificing too much visual fidelity. So today, we're going to examine every graphic settings the game has and compare them from lowest to the highest settings and check their impact on the performance of the game. Let's start with the most apparent setting you will notice when you play the game. The game has no full screen display option. Hogwarts Legacy is one of those games where the only display setting options available are full screen windowed or windowed mode, which makes it a little bit tricky to lower down or turn up your resolution. One of the methods you can do is to change your desktop resolution to the resolution you want to play in the game. Or play on windowed mode and you can easily change the resolution there. Although I would recommend playing in full screen windowed. Next on display option is anti-aliasing. Its function is to smooth out the edges of objects to make them appear less blurry and blends colors to make visuals look natural. On Hogwarts Legacy, we have three types of anti-aliasing, Temporal Low, Temporal High, and NVIDIA DLAA. On our test, Temporal Low looks blurry, while Temporal High and DLAA look similar and looks more natural. Temporal Low yields higher FPS compared to the other two, while Temporal High and DLAA had almost similar FPS. I recommend using DLAA if you're using an NVIDIA card and TAA High if you're using AMD or Intel cards. Moving on to upscaling. Hogwarts Legacy has five available methods of upscaling, but for the sake of brevity, I only tested DLSS, FSR 2.0, and Intel XESS. From our test, all three were similar looking in terms of texture. But in terms of performance, DLSS yielded slightly better FPS compared to the FSR, and XESS had the lowest FPS. Obviously, I'm going to suggest using DLSS here, but only use this when playing on 1440p native. Using upscaling on anything below 1440p, in my opinion, will always be blurry. As to DLSS, here's a quick comparison of numbers between quality, balanced, and performance. Next up is Field of View or FOV. This setting allows you to adjust the extent of the observable view that is seen in the display. This is measured by angle, so increasing your FOV would widen your vision and decreasing it would narrow down your vision. Generally, increasing the FOV would certainly take up performance. But from testing shown here, there is almost no significant decrease in performance from negative 10 FOV up to plus 20 FOV. But I would suggest setting this to around plus 10 to 15 FOV. Now let's take a look at effects quality. This controls the particles and visual effects of the game. The higher the settings is, the denser the effects and particles would be. Visual effects when attacking are much more prominent on ultra settings in comparison with low settings. The FPS drop from low to ultra settings was around 10%, while there was almost no significant decrease of FPS from low to high, so I would recommend setting this one to medium or high. Moving on to material quality. This affects the surface of objects in the game. For example, take a look at the base of this statue. From low to ultra settings, you can see subtle changes in the contrast and shaders. And from our test, we saw little to no difference in FPS, so I would suggest setting this to high or ultra. Now we go to fog quality. This setting changes volumetric effects like fogs and light shafts. On ultra settings, you can see that the fog is thicker and is better highlighted by the light shaft in comparison to low settings. Performance from low to ultra dropped around 8-10%, to while low to high settings saw a drop of around 5%. 
so I would suggest setting this one to medium or high. Next up is sky quality. Adjusting these settings will affect the appearance of volumetric clouds. On ultra settings, clouds become more detailed and thicker compared to low settings. Performance drop from low to ultra was around 3 to 5% and almost no change in performance from low to high. So I would suggest setting this to high settings. Next on our list is foliage quality. This setting adjusts the amount of vegetation seen on the trees and on the ground. It also affects the visual details of leaves and branches. On ultra, grasses and shrubs are dense making it hard to see anything beyond it. And from our test, the performance from low to ultra decreased at around 15%. So I would suggest setting this to low to make things easier to see, especially when you're around the forest. Moving on to post-process quality. Before testing this setting, make sure that motion blur, depth of field, chromatic aberration, and film grain are enabled on display options. Otherwise, you won't see much difference as these are the post processes that are primarily affected by this setting. The first post effect is motion blur. Motion blur refers to the visual blur that is added to moving objects which gives a sense of speed. Personally, I prefer setting motion blur to off as I don't like the effects it gives. Next post effect is depth of field. Depth of field gives the effect of blurring objects in the background as seen here in this example. With DOF set to off, the background is still in focus, while with DOF enabled, it blurs out the background. We now go to performance. The drop from low to ultra settings was around 10 to 22%, while going from low to high had 5 to 12% decrease in performance. So I would recommend using medium on this setting. Now let's take a look at shadow quality. This setting controls the resolution and contrast of shadows in the game. From low to ultra, the shadows are more detailed and darker. And from our test here, there was almost no significant decrease of performance from low to ultra. So I suggest setting this to at least high settings. Next up is texture quality. This setting adjusts the overall resolution of textures in the game, but surprisingly, I saw little to no difference on the textures rendered going from low to ultra. The same goes with the performance. There was almost no difference in performance on all settings, so I would recommend putting this on high or ultra. We now go to view distance quality. Adjusting this setting will affect the visibility of far objects and their geometric detail. As seen from our test, low settings barely rendered the details of the castle, while ultra settings rendered the full details of the castle and even rendered some foliage. Performance-wise, the drop from low to ultra settings was around 20% in some cases, while low to medium settings only had a drop of around 8%, so I would recommend setting this on medium. But if you find that far away objects are poorly rendered, setting this one on high should do the trick. Population quality adjusts the overall texture of non-interactable NPCs in the game. These are the NPCs you see walking around and randomly doing stuff. It also adjusts the number of NPCs spawn in a certain area. Areas where NPCs don't spawn will obviously not be affected by this setting. And surprisingly, like texture quality, I noticed little to no difference jumping from low to ultra settings. Performance-wise, the jump from low to ultra had 10 to 15% difference in some cases where the area is capable of spawning a lot of NPCs, like the Great Hall inside Hogwarts, while areas with medium number of NPCs like Hogsmeade would have performance drop of around 7 to 10% on low to ultra. So I would recommend setting this to low or medium depending on how frequent you want to see NPCs. And finally, we have ray tracing. I'm gonna make this quick and suggest that you should always disable this. Unless you have a god tier GPU like an RTX 4090 or 4080, there's no practical reason for you to run ray tracing. Not to mention Hogwarts Legacy suffer from poor implementation of ray tracing as seen here. Reflections on mirrors are barely distinguishable, 
and reflections from glossy tiles are even worse. Oh, and did I mention ray tracing cuts your FPS in half almost all the time? So here's a quick rundown of my recommended settings. Now it's time to compare our settings to low and ultra preset. From low settings to our custom settings, there was only an average decrease of 10 to 20% in FPS while looking more closely to high and ultra settings. When compared to ultra settings, our custom setting had better FPS of around 25 to 50% depending on the situation. With DLSS set to quality, our FPS goes even higher. Again, I would only recommend using DLSS when playing on 1440p or above. But your preferences might differ, so feel free to test the waters. Overall, Hogwarts Legacy is an amazing game. Great storyline, breathtaking visuals, and innovative game mechanics. And hopefully, these settings will give you a better experience roaming Hogwarts. On that note, we end our video. If you liked the video, show your support by liking it and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.